All right, great. Thanks everyone for joining um, and welcome to the Global Travel Scholars Information Session. We appreciate your interest in the Global Travel Scholars Program and how you or a student that you know can apply for the 2025 Global Travel Scholars Program. My name is Kathleen Newell. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the Director of Youth Programming at the World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm also joined by my colleague, Angie Afri, at, from the Experiment in International Living. And uh, together, Angie and I are going to walk you through the different components of the Global Travel Scholars Program and how students can get involved. And um, we'll also have some time at the end to take any questions that you have. So before we get started, just a little bit about the World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh. The World Affairs Council, if you're not familiar, is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization uh, based in Pittsburgh that convenes and connects people around global issues to build a thriving, competitive, and inclusive Pittsburgh. We do this through a variety of programs for high school and middle school programs, which we call our youth programs. And we also do this through public programs that we offer to the broader intergenerational community. Ultimately, the goal of all of our work is to create a globally minded and globally connected world that is equitable and just for all. You can find out about all of the council's programs on our website at worldpittsburgh.org. The program that you're here tonight to learn a little bit more about is our Global Travel Scholars Program. The Global Travel Scholars Program provides uh, needs-based scholarships for high school students who have never traveled abroad before and would not be able to do so without uh, a scholarship. The Global Travel Scholarship covers uh, is a full scholarship and it covers all programming fees associated with the travel abroad experience. That includes the program expenses, in-country transportation, meals and accommodation while abroad, orientation and language fees, and health and accident insurance. It also includes the student's domestic and international flights and baggage fees. Um, if a student needs to stay in a hotel during their travel abroad, it would be included within the scholarship. And students' passport and visa fees are also covered through the program. We're gonna go over a lot of information tonight, but I also wanted to mention that this is being recorded and will be shared out afterwards. So if you need to reference it, there's addition, you'll have that as a reference. Uh, and there is also information, including the links to the application on our website, worldpittsburgh.org slash global dash travel. And you can find out additional information there as well. If you go to the website as well at the bottom, there is a video of our 2024 Global Travel Scholars telling stories from their trips abroad. So if you're interested in hearing more from this past year's cohort and more about the 20 year history of the program, uh, you can find that video on our website as well. Uh, so I mentioned that Angie's here with us tonight, and that is because we're able to offer this program through a partnership with the Experiment in International Living. And so the council uh, partners with the experiment to offer the travel abroad component of the scholarship. But the council's program and the GTS program, um, GTS being the, the shortened acronym that we use for the Global Travel Scholars Program, uh, is a year long program of the council. So when a student applies to be a global travel scholar, they are committing to a year long program. Um, and that includes uh, the council's support of the applicants and their families in applying for a passport or visa, completing all of the program paperwork, uh, support around the application process, the council also uh, works with the experiment to select the scholars that will travel abroad. And then we provide wraparound programming. So we know that these students have not traveled abroad before, um, and oftentimes their families have not traveled abroad before. So we wanna make sure that we meet with those students uh, through three workshops to help them to really prepare for travel abroad and to think more deeply and intentionally about um, what, it's what they're going to experience abroad, how they need to navigate the airport, what they need to pack, and also just sort of the 
uh, mental preparedness that's going to be required for the experiences that they'll have. When those students come back from traveling abroad, we work with them to tell their story and think more deeply about the transformative impact that they experienced. They also then do a group project and become a program ambassador. Our partners at The Experiment, uh, they host uh, one of the applications through their portal and have a portal that's available as a resource to the selected students and families that provide lots of information about the programs that they're attending. They also plan all of the logistics for the trip abroad. They do a program specific pre departure orientation with students. They are the on the ground program provider. So they work with partners in country and trained group leaders who accompany the student groups abroad uh, for the full uh, three weeks or four weeks of their program. They, as I mentioned, train two adult group leaders who are accompanying the students while abroad. And they also provide 24 seven on-call support while students are on their programs. So if parents or families have questions or concerns or need to reach their students while they're traveling abroad, there is a 24 seven on-call support team that can help to answer any questions or connect with students if need be. So who is eligible to apply? Uh, students who are currently in grades nine and 10, so sophomores and juniors are eligible. A student has to be 16 plus as of February 1st, 2024 in order to apply. If a student is a high school, a current high school senior, they are not eligible. So this is only for students who are 16 plus and in grades 10 and 11 currently. Um, I've had a few cases where students um, turn 16 on say February 2nd or February 3rd. If that applies to you, please feel free to reach out and we can um, sort of talk about that on a case by case basis. The reason for that specific uh, deadline is around the passport application process and uh, students applying for a 10 year passport. They need to be 16 in order to do that. A student has to either live in the Pittsburgh area, and that includes all of sort of southwestern Pennsylvania. So we're talking about the fuller Pittsburgh region um, or the greater Pittsburgh region, and they must or they can be outside of that region if they are an active member of one of our Global Minds chapters. Students cannot have traveled outside of the United States or Canada previously. And the only exception to that rule is in the case of immigrant origin youth um, who lived abroad previously or have had to travel back to their country of origin to visit, uh, to visit family or because of specific circumstances that require that they return. Uh, so no leisure travel outside of the US or Canada. Um, and we also do assess the student's financial need for the scholarship. So if a student is able to travel abroad with family support, financial support, and they would not require a full scholarship to travel abroad, they also would not be eligible for this program. So it is for students with high financial need. There's a few things that the scholarship does not cover. Um, we do not cover students' transportation um, to or from the Pittsburgh International Airport. So a parent or a family member or a mentor supporter would have to drive the students to the Pittsburgh International Area, uh, Airport. In the case of a Global Minds chapter student, if they were selected, it would be to their departure airport that they would need a ride. They would not depart from Pittsburgh. Um, we also are not able to uh, provide reimbursement for any immunizations or uh, medical supplies or um, medical co-pays for students who need physicals. Um, and then if students want um, incidental expenses for or incidental funds for their time abroad, so to buy things like gifts or souvenirs uh, for tips or snacks or any sort of extra things, we give students a $200 stipend that they can use um, however they need. But beyond that, we don't cover uh, any additional incidental expenses for the students travel abroad. All of their basic needs around food and all of the program expenses and, and transportation are covered. So these would be extra expenses that the students would incur while they're abroad. So students, when they apply for the program, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the application process in just a moment, 
they apply for and and um have to rank their top three choices of programs that they are most interested in. So one of the great things about our partners at the experiment is they offer uh, 11 programs in nine countries this year. Um, and each of the programs focus on a different area or theme. Um, and hopefully this connects to the student's personal interest or their career goals. And so, it, for example, if a student is interested in uh, going into the culinary arts, they would study culinary arts in Italy. Um, if a student is um, interested in better understanding Spanish culture, they would do that in Spain. Uh, for students who are interested in Korean language and culture, they can study that in South Korea. I know for students interested in the environment, there are programs in Costa Rica that help students to better understand climate change. So each program has a thematic focus area that the students will learn more about on their trip abroad. So we ask students to look into each of the programs that are listed on the experiments website. And Angie will talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. And to tell us their top three choices in order um, that they're most interested in and why, how it aligns with their future goals. Um, there are two programs that are called Leadership Institute programs that requires a special interview for students to be able to be selected for that program. And there is also um, one country or one program, excuse me, in Ghana that um, allows students to get college credit for attending the program. Uh, again, this is another piece that Angie's going to elaborate a bit more on, but each program uh, consists of an orientation, a homestay where the students get to stay with local families um, in the country. They are vetted families and they oftentimes have participated in the program many times. It's usually the part of the trip that students are most nervous about and then typically say was the most rewarding part of the experience once they return. Um, and then there is the thematic focus of the program and then an opportunity for reflection. Um, all of the programs take place during the month of July. Um, and there is a small, there is a group structure. So typically there is a small group of students. I, I think it's usually about 15 students or maybe 15 at the most and two group leaders that travel together for the entire duration of the trip. The council's global travel scholars are typically not in the same groups. So typically we try to select students from across the region who have uh, di are matched with then uh, different country programs. And so oftentimes our students are not all traveling together, but they are traveling with a group of 15 students from around the US and sometimes other countries and that group of 15 students um, stay together for the entire entirety of their travel abroad experience. Um, and students do get information about their group leaders um, in advance of the trip. When a student is selected to become a Global Travel Scholar program, they have to commit to participating in the full program. So the program dates are available on the experiments website for each of the programs, you can see that the dates of travel. So a student has to commit to those full programs. We've had families ask before, we have an important family event, can my student go late and meet up with the group or could they come home early? The answer is no, uh, it is a requirement that they have to be able to depart and return with the group on the fixed dates that the programs um, are set for. So again, you can see at the bottom there, experiment.org slash travel, or sorry, experiment.org slash abroad dash destinations will take you to the experiment website where you can see those programs and look a bit more um, at the dates and requirements for participation. So if your student is interested in applying, it is a two-part application process. First, students will complete what we call the Global Travels Application, Global Travel Scholars Application Form. That is a Google form that is um, sent through the council, um, and that helps us to better understand the student's interest in the program, uh, assess their financial need, and also um, allows the student to indicate if they are interested in one of those Leadership Institute programs, which do require a separate selection process. 
Then students have to complete the application for admission, which is done through the experiments portal. Again, the links for both of these applications are on the experiments website, and they are both due on January 8th. The Global Travel Scholars application form, the first form that's done through the council, it will ask the students to also list a recommender. And that recommender can be a parent, caregiver, or other mentor who would support the student in the program. Once they supply that information for a recommender, we do send a short form to the recommender um, to ask them to complete on behalf of the students. So if, if it's helpful for students to get in their applications as soon as possible so that we can also get that information and get that form collected from their recommender as well. If a student is selected for an interview, those interviews will be held on February 1st. Um, and then scholars are going to be selected and notified um, in early February. We do also select a small number of alternates. If a student is selected as an alternate, that means they have not initially been selected to travel abroad. But what the council does is we support those students in getting their passport. We pay for their application and walk them through the process to apply for a passport. That passport is theirs to keep uh, for free. It's good for 10 years. Um, and if any of the students who are selected have to drop out or withdraw from the program for any reason, those students would then um, be offered a spot in the program. Um, so it allows us to make sure that if anything changes, any circumstances change for any of our students, that we have students who have passports and are available to go, um, though it's not guaranteed uh, at the time that an alternate status is offered. So just a little bit more about the applications. Again, the Global Travel Scholars application due Wednesday, January 8th. It's available on our website, worldpittsburgh.org slash global dash travel. That application um, assesses students' eligibility for the program and it includes household financial info. So on that application, questions 20 through 22 should be completed in consultation with a parent or guardian. And that is about the, the, the family's household income and also um, an opportunity to tell us a little bit more about any financial hardship. So we know that some of our families um, may have a slightly higher household income than others, but due to family medical expenses or other extenuating circumstances uh, would not be able to afford travel abroad. So those questions will really allow families to sort of demonstrate the financial need element um, that the student has that would make them um, a good fit for the program. That information is uh, kept confidential. It is only shared with the selection committee, which consists of council staff members, um, a youth member of our team who also helps in the selection process and Angie as well. Um, that application also um, asks the students to talk about what they're hoping to get out of that full year program that they're um, involved in and then to uh, demonstrate or uh, express any interest in the Leadership Institute programs. The application for admission that's done through the experiment portal, it can be found at experiment.org slash apply. That's where students can make a free account. Um, and on that application, students are asked to share personal information. They share their primary parent or guardian information so that they are also the point of contact for uh, any travel abroad related uh, matters if the student is selected. This is where they select the programs that they're most interested in. There's a few short answer essays, um, a letter of reference that is requested, and uh, a homestay letter as well. Um, again, for program selections, you can view all of that information on the experiment website. There you're gonna be able to find program descriptions, travel dates, if there are any prerequisites, so some of the programs may require that the student have has taken a certain amount of language study to be eligible for the program, you'll find that listed within those program details. 
You can also see a sample itinerary of what students do on that program, a breakdown of where they're traveling to, how long they're in different areas of the country, what's all involved. Um, and eventually that's also where you see the group leader intros when they are available. When a student is selecting uh, the programs that they're interested in, we recommend that they pick a program that is connected to their talents and interest. So if a student is really interested in a certain topic, wants to explore something as a possible future career, um, it has a family connection to a particular country, we encourage you to explore those as your top choices and we'll ask you to tell us a bit about why you selected them, um, both in the application and if a student is selected for the interview. We encourage students to independently research the countries that they're interested in to find out a bit more. And we also uh, tell students that they need to remember that these are just their preferences for travel abroad, but they are not the final selection. And so students need to be flexible about where they might be able to travel to. Um, so the selection committee, when we are deciding who are gonna be our global travel scholars, we both select the students and we match them with their programs. We do try to be thoughtful of matching the students as much as possible with one of their top three choices. But again, we typically try to send students to different countries each year. Um, and so a student may not get their first or second choice. It's not guaranteed. And we ask students to be uh, flexible, but to tell us why they are interested in those programs so that we can make the best match for them. When students are writing that their essays, um, we ask that they uh, be compelling. This is really their opportunity to, to express to the selection committee why they're interested in this opportunity, how it aligns with their future goals, and how it would be transformative. That's really what we're looking for when we're selecting these students. And so before being invited to an interview, this is the only information that we have about these students. So really be thoughtful about what you're putting into the essays uh, to really make your case. There are some additional questions that are gonna be asked for those programs that with college credit. Um, and for students, uh, when you're writing the essays, we really recommend that you have someone else read and give you some feedback before you send in those essays. Maybe copy the questions into a Word document and answer them there first so that you have some time to workshop them. Um, answer in complete sentences. Be descriptive. Tell us your story. Tell us your why for wanting to do this. Make sure to use professional writing, so proofread for spelling and grammar. Uh, mistakes and try not to leave out information. So there are uh, character limits. So um, you kind of want to be thoughtful of what can fit in, um, but really be uh, intentional about what you include and what information you share and make sure you're answering the question as fully as possible. If you are selected to be a global travel scholar, we this is a leadership opportunity. So it's really an opportunity to gain leadership skills. And so we ask that students be mature and reliable. They're expected to, uh, students are expected to demonstrate their readiness to travel abroad and to live independently. That means when we're reaching out to folks um, for papers or to communicate about workshops or other matters related to the programs, we're first addressing those uh, communications to the student and we're copying the parents. Um, and that is because we expect the students to demonstrate their readiness to be part of this program, to take initiative, to be communicative in the process. So unless um, there is a direct need to be in touch with the parents only, um, we do copy parents and caregivers on those emails, but we will be expecting the students to be the ones to be communicative in that process. And we do uh, ask for communication in a timely manner. So there's a lot of paperwork, as I'm sure you can imagine, that goes on to be able to run these programs, to be able to apply for passports and complete other medical forms and other uh, parental permission forms that are required for all of this to happen. The council team is here to support you. We're here to answer the questions you have and to walk you through the process. Um, but that also requires uh, communication on your end. And there are forms that have to be completed in a very timely manner. So we do ask that there's a response to emails within 48 hours during business days. 
Uh, for students who are selected to be a Global Travel Scholar, we also ask them to be an ambassador of the council's work. Um, and that means, you know, being able to tell their story, share information about the program within their schools and community groups. That's what allows this program to continue um, is because students are able to share the transformative impact of the program. Um, and then we also require students to attend meetings associated with the program, and that in includes the pre-departure orientations. One of those pre-departure orientations, the one that is focused specifically on travel logistics, um, we do require that a, a parent or caregiver also attend that meeting as well. As I mentioned before, you know, just something to keep in mind is that students are committing to a year long program that has the wraparound pre and post travel components. So there's a big focus and a big part of the program is travel abroad, but this really is a full year long commitment by students um, to be a global travel scholar. Just a little bit more about those pre departure orientations. There are four that are offered. Three of them are hosted by the World Affairs Council. The first workshop is focused on cultural humility. This is where we have students think more deeply about cross-cultural communication and cross-cultural experiences and how they can make the most um, of their time abroad, their stay with host families, and just the people that they'll meet throughout their experiences. Our second workshop is gonna focus on travel logistics. That's where we go, go over everything from how to exchange currency, how to navigate the airport, um, what to pack, if you need certain technology while you're abroad, how you'll talk to your families and communicate, how to come up with a plan for those processes. So that's a, a big workshop that we have uh, to really help prepare students and get them packing and thinking about the actual trip abroad. And then our third workshop is focused on identity, privilege, and self-care while abroad. Um, and that's really an opportunity for students to um, think about the mindset uh, that they'll need to be successful and how they can take care of themselves successfully while they're abroad. Um, and oftentimes independently living for a month by themselves. So, uh, and then the fourth workshop is hosted by our partners at The Experiment. And this is a program specific orientation. So um, for, ex for whatever country the student has been matched with, that orientation will be specific to that program and, and what the student will experience um, and should expect for their trip. Okay, so once a student is selected as a global travel scholar, lots has to happen right out of the gate. So within two days of the selection, students have to accept their position in the global travel scholars program. And they also have to complete a liability and media release form that uh, locks them into their scholarship position. And that allows us to then um, get checks issued to those students that will allow them to apply for their passport. Passport applications are due, uh, they have to be submitted uh, to the a USPS facility by February 18th. So you can see that those dates happen really quickly back to back. Um, so those are the first big things that have to happen. Um, and then within two weeks of acceptance by the experiment, they will also send some pre-programmed documents that are due, which include conditions of participation, an initial health form, and an acknowledgement of risk form. Um, and then by March 15th, students need to submit a complete health form. And starting in March, um, and then monthly from there, there'll be the three pre-departure orientations. And the experiments program specific orientation typically happens in May or early June. Again, after travel, um, students have to permit per, participate, excuse me, in a group project through the council. We ask that students tell their story at our welcome home storytelling event in the fall. Again, that's what's linked on our website if you wanna check out the most recent one. Um, that also includes some planning sessions and rehearsals that the students do in advance to think about how to tell their story most effectively. 
We ask that students continue to serve as an ambassador of the council, a mentor for future scholars, especially those students who might be traveling to the same country that they travel to. Um, and then we also ask them to meet with those next cohorts of students uh, or potentially meet with future funders, um, anything that allows the program to continue into the future um, and helps us to expand the council's work in the region. And then we also ask that students provide us with testimonials, reviews, and essays, both for the program itself and for uh, the experiment. Again, these are just things that allow the programs uh, to continue and allow us to continually improve these programs. Okay, with that, Angie, I will turn it over to you and we will take questions um, about all of this at the end. So, Thank ahead. you so much, Kathleen. I hope everyone can hear me okay. As Kathleen mentioned, my name is Angie Afriye, and I am the Partnership and Alumni Engagement Officer at The Experiment. So essentially, my role at The Experiment is to assist you all through your application process, so from the very beginning, um, all the way through orientations, as Kathleen mentioned, and then also during the summer, my team and I are on call 24-7 to provide any assistance that students, families, or group leaders may need. And I want to emphasize that because we mean that in the most literal sense, 24-7, if anything comes up, please do not hesitate to reach us. So I'll just start with a really quick brief history about the experiment and how we got started. So the first experiment program was in 1932 and we'll be celebrating 90 years super soon. Um, so our founder, Donald Watt, led his first journey across the Atlantic in 1932 to foster international peace and understanding what he called the experiment. So in the beginning, how this started was he brought over German students to the United States for a cultural exchange. And in turn, um, as years and years went by, students from the U.S. were able to travel to other countries and explore their cultures, their people, their way of life, etc. So most of the students that have participated in the experiment, you know, come back and say that they have been, you know, transformed, their experience are transformative, they have a different outlook on the world, um, leadership skills, communication skills, and all of these amazing things, which is what we are wanting and hoping to continue to do um, with our programs. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, the world learning um, family is pretty big, right? So it's encompassing of the experiment, SIT, and world learning as a whole. So we have um, SIT Graduate Institute, which offers internationally focused master's degrees and professional development programs. And then we also have SIT Abroad, which offers undergraduate study abroad programs as well. So for example, let's say you have your um, you know, experience or your student has their experience on the experiment. And later down the line, they're interested in traveling abroad again, you can do that with us again through SIT as well. So we can, you know, um, keep it going. And then World Learning as the larger organization or the parent organization oversees programs bringing global leaders to the U.S. every year on international, professional, academic, and youth exchange programs. So there are so many programs that students can participate in all across the board um, through World Learning and the experiment. So as Kathleen mentioned, I won't spend too much time on this slide because I know we went over it, but these are the um, thematic focuses of the program. So as you can see, they are broken down into um, different themes. So peace, politics, and human rights, our language training programs, cultural discovery and the arts and sustainability and the environment. So as you are thinking about these programs, determining what you might be interested in, really spend some time to look at these themes, read a bit about it, there are so, I know when you go on the website, there's so many words, but it's so important for you to take a look at them because we want you to select programs that match your interests and have something to do with whatever it is you may want to do in the future as well, or something that you could possibly be doing right now. Um, so for example, if I was interested in the Ghana program, which I'm just throwing in there because I'm from Ghana, but I would really, you know, go on the website, take a look at what the description says, scroll down to the sample itinerary, read a bit about some of the group leaders that have led the program. Program, so you can get a full picture and a real feel for the programs that you are interested in. 
So the next slide here talks about our learning journey. So we know that, you know, studying abroad, traveling, it can be fun. It's amazing, but there is purpose to what it is that you are doing and what we want you to gain out of it. So the first um, circle that you see here is collective. So this is a group experience. As was mentioned in previous slides, you'll be traveling with a cohort of other students, either from the, from the United States and possibly internationally as well. So it can range from 12 to about 18 students, depending on your group and what program you're in. So this um, experience is for the whole entire group. So there will be group students from diverse backgrounds, socioeconomic, racial, ethnic, geographic, etc. And also, as I mentioned, 12 to 18, depending on what group you're in. The um, learning journey is immersive. So one of the key components of your experience on the experiment is to be fully immersed in the culture of the country in which you are um, in currently. So by doing that, it's through your home stays, the activities that have been planned for you, practicing the language. So as was mentioned, some of your programs might have a prerequisite. So it's important to definitely, you know, take a look at that as well. And, you know, start doing some self-study. So researching the countries that you're interested in, their language, um, and just, you know, talking to people, even in your schools, your neighborhoods who may speak that language. You never know the resources that are already readily available to you so that you can be fully immersed in the experience while you are there. The learning journey is also experiential, and we want you to learn by doing. So by doing that, it goes back to the previous circle, which is immersing yourself completely in the experience, but also doing the things that you're there for. So for example, our Italy program is focused on culinary training and um, the culture. So out the gate, our students are in their chef hats, their chef coats, and they are cooking, they're getting their hands dirty, they are in there with the chef and doing all the things that really gives them the true authentic feel of culinary training and also learning the culture. So through language, through activities, et cetera. So we want you to be able to do the thing that you're there to do because that is the only way that you're gonna fully learn. Um, and last but certainly not least, one of the key components is it is a supportive learning journey. So as I mentioned, my role is to really assist you with your application, your document collecting, making sure that, you know, if I need to assist you to call the doctor's office, like, hey, I need my physical, that is what we're going to do because we want to make sure that you have all the support that you need. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, the team is on call 24-7, providing that support while students are traveling abroad as well. And your group leaders, they are there to support you directly on the ground while you are on program. They are your first point of contact. So you want to make sure that you are utilizing them to the best of your ability while you are there. Some of your programs may also have in-country co-leaders as well. So that's an additional support to have. And our in-country program team and on the ground staff are almost always around as well. So there will be so much support for you while you are on program so that you can truly, you know, make the best of your three or four weeks, depending on what program you are in. Next, please. Awesome. So as was mentioned in a previous slide, you'll be traveling with two group leaders from the U.S. And um, depending on your program, you may have in-country co-leaders as well. Our group leaders are trained, experienced teachers and professionals. So some of them are guidance counselors, social workers, principals. Um, they are individuals that have been working with young people for years and years and years um, past and more to come. They are trained, all of us, I, I won't even just say the group leaders, our whole entire staff and the group leaders are trained yearly to make sure that we are providing you all with the logistical, physical, mental, um, and supports and everything in between that you need as well. So in June, we all visit one centralized location in our trade and our risk management to make sure that we we are doing our due diligence while you are on our program. Our group leaders are responsible for student health, safety, and well-being. Traveling is fun. It's an amazing experience, but we want to make sure that you are okay, both physically and mentally while doing so, so they get the training for that, and they are responsible for that piece and others while on program as well. They are very well versed in collective learning and experiential education. So some of them have been in your shoes with travel abroad experience. Some of them have lived abroad as well. So they are, um, you know, highly well versed in um, our 
web pedagogy. And last but not least, they are responsible for program logistics and travel support. So you will meet your group leaders at the um, designated airport. So depending on what um, program you're in. So for example, our East Asian programs typically fly at SFO. So you'll meet your group leaders and your group there, and they will assist their forward with any travel support and program logistics that you may need. Homestays, as Kathleen mentioned, that is always one of the biggest questions that we get. We understand that going in um, to live with a family can be like a very intense experience, but definitely want you to know that our families have been hosting with us for many years. They are also trained by our in-country partners and our homestay coordinators. They are volunteers, so this is what they love to do. This is what they want to do. They want to open up their homes and their culture to our participants, to our students, and share that with them. Um, so they are they come highly highly trained and highly recommended for sure. Um, your home stays a few days to three weeks, depending on what program you're in. So I definitely strongly advise visiting our website to view that travel, um, that sample itinerary we've been talking about. So you can kind of see, depending on what program, how long your home stay will be. Um, so during your homestay, you'll be participating in a daily life of the local community and your host family as well. So for example, if you're in France and one of the biggest things that happens every summer is Bastille Day, our students love it, you'll be participating in that as well. If you go and maybe your host brother or sister is having a birthday, you might be attending a birthday party. Some of you may have a birthday on program and might be having your own parties. So all the things that take place with your family on their day to day is what you will be experiencing as well. Your full group, including your leaders, participate in the homestay experience, and you all will be in the same region or town. And we do this um, purposely and also to ensure that one, you guys have access to your group still because you still will be see seeing your other group members and doing activities with them, but also in the event that you need your group leader for anything. We want them to always be readily available to you um, in case of anything at all. You'll still be having, as I mentioned, group get-togethers, meetings, and different cultural activities. So it's not like you get to your homestay to never see your group again until the end of program. You all will still be meeting. Um, you'll still be doing activities together. Um, and then other portions you will be with just your host family. And as mentioned, our um, homestay families go through an extensive recruiting and vetting process. They are well-versed in our risk management policies as well and know what the experiment and world learnings expectations are, along with the expectations of the in-country partners who um, hired them and such to do so. So let's talk a bit about your program focus. So what is the reason or some reasons why students want to travel abroad or participate in um, study abroad programs or um, programs such as the experiment? Some of the key components is to explore a future major or career. Maybe you know what you want to do, you have an inkling, you have an idea. Um, of something that you want to do as you get older, whether that's college, whether that's a job, whether it's a trade or what have you. So this is the perfect opportunity to get out there, see the world beyond our own neighborhoods and kind of get a feel for what's going on out there. During some of these um, programs, you'll be meeting with ex local experts in their field. So for example, our Japan Anime and Manga program, students are working with individuals who are responsible for some of these animes that you all love, like Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, and what have you. Those are the only two that I know because those are the only two that I watch. <laughs> but all the different ones that you all love. Um, so this is your chance to talk with local experts in their field. And it's also your opportunity to gain valued experience and skills. So maybe Maybe one of your biggest reasons for wanting to study abroad is to come out of your shell and learn some more public speaking. This is the perfect opportunity because you'll be doing, you know, group projects with your group and talking to new people and meeting new people. Or maybe yours is learning how to wake up early without an alarm or without mom and dad having to bust in your room. This is a great opportunity because some of your activities start super early in the morning. 
Um, and this is also a great chance for folks to earn college credit as well with our programs that offer college credit. So that being Ghana, and also, as I mentioned, engaging with your local experts to deepen your understanding of critical global issues. Maybe you're really interested in politics. So the Germany program piques your interest. This would be a great opportunity to work alongside folks who are also interested in international relations and politics. So all the things that you're interested in, you are likely to come across someone or someones that have some understanding and you'll be able to pick their brains while there. As I mentioned, and I want to keep stressing this point, your health and safety is so important to us. It is, um, you know, one of our top priorities. So the experiment practices a 360 degree approach and focuses on your mental and physical well-being of um, participants while you are on program. So let's say you wake up one morning, you're really not feeling well for whatever reason, please let your group leaders know if you aren't sure, you know, how, what you want to say to your group leaders, what's going on with you, tell a peer, let them let an adult know, because we want to make sure that you are okay during this entirety of your program, and that is physically and mentally as well. During our pre-departure orientations, we will talk about, further about the resources readily available to you in the event that you need them while on program. We provide insurance for accidents, illnesses, emergency evacuations, or anything like that while on program. We partner with GeoBlue, um, so they provide us the expert guidance on all of these things. So no matter where you are in the world, we will be able to find a clinic, hospital, um, doctor's office to get you any medical attention should you need it. As I mentioned, our team is on call 24-7 per every day all the time <laughs> for any support during programs as well. So please utilize us. And that is, um, we will provide you with those numbers as well during pre-departure orientation so that you can have them, store them in your phone. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, parents on the call that you are okay while your participant is on program. And for the participants as well, we want to make sure that you are getting all the um, assistance you need should you need it. And our in-country local support is readily available as well. So our on-the-ground partners, our homestay coordinators, and as I mentioned, your experiment group leaders, they are your first point of contact. I cannot stress this enough. If anything goes on and you text mom or dad or call mom and dad, then they call us. We still have to contact your group leaders. So it is super easy to you know, go to your group leaders and tell them what's happening so they can assist you rather quickly as well. So what are the next steps? The Some of these steps, I think just about all of them was mentioned, but I want to reiterate um, the online application process and the interview, as was mentioned. Um, so when you go on the experiment website to fill out your application, student and parent guardian information, um, there are short written responses. There's an essay if you are interested in the Leadership Institute program. And you also need to write a home study letter and attach a photo. In the photo, if it is, it can be a group photo, so a family picture, picture with your friends, et cetera. Just please remember to indicate where you are in that photo. Um, so for example, maybe I'm the one in the red shirt or I am on the left. However it is that we can ensure that we know who you are in that photo will be most helpful. Every application, every student needs to submit a letter of reference, and this has to be from a teacher, counselor, advisor, someone that can really speak to who you are as a student, your ability to work in groups, maturity level, um, what you can bring to your cohort, et cetera. And two of those is um, required if you are interested in our um, Ghana program, because as it is college credit, and a high school transcript as well for our college credit program. And as mentioned, you will need a passport. This is international travel. So we need a copy of your passport and then you'll be participating in an interview um, as was mentioned on February 1st. So passport applications take about 14 weeks or so. So as you, as we already talked about, you'll get all that information um, later on to have your passport and apply by February 15th. So I wanna make sure you do that by the deadline. Slide please. So this is super important. I know this is a bit hard to see and I apologize for that, but um, this is super important. So this is what the application looks like when you are on the experiment website. So as you can see, um, it says program selection. So that is like one of the first things that you see. 
this is where you will indicate to us what programs you are interested in. But above that, it asks, were you nominated by a mentoring organization, sponsoring organization, or sending school? Please do not forget to select yes. If you select no, I will find you and we will have major issues. No, I'm just kidding. But this is very important. This is because there is a $50 application fee and a $400 non-refundable enrollment deposit. These are waived if, when you indicate that you were nominated by um, a mentoring organization. And in the dropdown, you will select World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh. Again, that is one of the most important things that I will say tonight. Everything we said is important, but this is definitely <laughs> on the top five. Um, so please do not forget in the event that you do, do email me or Kathleen so that we can I can go into the back end and change it. But we do not want your parents to incur a cost that they do not need to. So this is waived. So again, you select yes, choose World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh and the $50 application fee and $400 non-refundable. Non-refundable is a real scary word because you can't get that back. <laughs> Um, so we want to make sure this is waived for you. So please do not forget this. And then you proceed to choose the three programs that you are interested in. And then you can go on with the remainder of the application. As you can also see here, there is a tab. There'll be the tab for the references. I sometimes say to students, if you know who you want to write the reference for, go to that tab, put in their first name, last name, email address so they can get the electronic form, and then you can go back and start your application. References tend to take the longest. We know your teachers, advisors, coaches, et cetera, are super busy. So we want to give them ample time to, you know, write your reference for you. Um, so just make sure that you take care of that as soon as possible as well as that tends to hold some folks up. And that is all. Thank you so much. Thanks, Angie. Yeah, and I'll just echo um, Angie. I guess we really buried the lead on the importance of selecting the council as the partner organization on the application, but that also allows that student's information to be shared with us um, through the portal. So that's also important uh, in addition to waiving the fee so that the council team and the selection committee are able to view that student's application. Um, but with that, you can see here that I've listed my contact information as well as Angie's contact information. Um, both teams are happy to support you with any questions that you have throughout the application or selection process. Um, but with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we would love to hear any questions that students, um, caregivers on the call have um, or other uh, partnering organizations that might be working with students. Um, you can unmute to ask them. You can also drop them in the chat. The last thing I'll say um, as we move to questions is that whether or not uh, you as a student or a family or community partner are um, supporting a specific student in applying, um, I would encourage you to also think about other students in your network that you might know who may also be interested um, and applying and please encourage them and spread the word um, so that more students um, in the region uh, are able to learn about this opportunity. Um, there's a question in the chat about income limits to qualify. Um, there is not a very specific rubric that we, um, the criteria that has to be met specifically, we ask, on the form for you to indicate um, your household income. We do compare that um, to sort of what percentage above or below the poverty line that is for your family, but we also ask questions about any other expenses or extenuating circumstance that would qualify you for financial hardship. So like, as I mentioned before, um, if a family has um, a lot of medical debt due to a sick family member, um, if a family member is a caregiver for grandparents, um, or, you know, we've had other families who've had parents who've been laid off or have incurred other hardships, um, we take all of that into consideration when we uh, determine eligibility. Um, if you'd like to share more about that with, with me before um, completing the full application, you can feel free to send me an email, um, but we do look at a variety of factors in determining that financial hardship piece.
Other questions? So the question in the chat is if a student turns 16 in May and is in 10th grade, would they be eligible? And the answer is no, they wouldn't be eligible this year um, because they would not be able to apply for and receive their passport in time for travel. Um, but that student would be eligible to apply next year to the program. Um, and we would encourage them to do so. Um, so they really have to be um, 16 on or right around um, the deadline. If the student already has the passport, that's the question, the follow-up question. That's a great question. If the passport is valid through, and Angie, can you help me on the date? I think it would be February of 2026. Is that right? Correct. So valid February 28th. And I want to specify that because we get questions about February 1st and so on. It has to be all the way through the end of February to be valid. So if the student has a passport already and it is valid through February 28th, 2026, that student could apply if they are in 10th grade. Great question. We'll wait a few more minutes. Um, Angie, I'll let you take that question in the chat if you would, because I know you're well versed in the policies around host family stays. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, our host families have been hosting with us for quite a while and they are vetted. Um, we also have a resource on our website where families and students can chat with previous experimenters to talk a bit more about the homestay. Um, we haven't had any major homestay issues come up. The most is students not knowing how to work some of the things in their homestay because it's a bit different from what they are used to. Um, but definitely understanding that concern, but our host families are definitely, you know, they are vetted, they are well versed in our risk management policies as well, um, and also the policies that are surrounding the organization who vets them, which is our in-country partners. Um, should any issues arise where students are at their home stays, as I mentioned before, the group leaders are the first point of contact and the home stay coordinator. So we want students to let us know about anything, no matter how small they think it may be or how big, we definitely want to know about anything um, that is going on so that it can be addressed promptly. And one of the things that I, you know, also want students and families to keep in mind as well, just as much as they are strangers to you, your students are also strangers to them. Um, and they are, you know, welcoming them in their homes as well. They have little children as well, et cetera. Um, so we definitely understand your concerns and theirs as well, because we get those questions from them also. Um, so we want to, you know, ensure both parties are feeling, you know, feeling okay, feeling reassured, et cetera. So please, if anyone wants to speak with an experimenter who have done our programs, um, you know, to talk about their homestay experience, et cetera, we definitely welcome that. And I am available to talk with anyone further about our homestay policies as well. And you can find them on our website too. So you can see how we go about selecting and um, vetting our families.
we'll wait a couple of minutes just in case there are any additional questions, but I'm dropping in the chat here, the link again to our website, worldpittsburgh.org slash global.travel dash travel, excuse me, I've said it wrong every time and I'm looking right at it. Um, I'm also putting in again, my email address, Kathleen at worldpittsburgh.org. If you have any questions and would like to um, reach out afterwards, or you think of something after the call that you didn't get to ask, um, I'm happy to assist you and make sure you get the right, um, the right information uh, in order to apply. Again, just emphasizing that, that there's a two-part application process. Both applications are due by January 8th, which is a Wednesday. Um, and on the experiment application, students do have to select that they were are applying through the World Affairs Council as the partner organization. And the question in the chat is, is it better to choose a program based on the interest in the program rather than interest in visiting the country you'd like. So um, that's a as the answer to that is just sort of based on your personal preference. You do rank your top three choices um, in the application. So you could um, both rank the country that you're most interested in. And if the, the thematic focus of a different country is also a high preference, you can also list that and then explain your interest in both. And, um, you know, Angie is an excellent partner in many ways, but one of the great things that she brings to the selection process is, is a lot of insight into what the programs offer. And so when we hear from the students and when we read their applications, um, Angie is usually able to think about, okay, this is what the students telling me they want to get out of this experience. And I think this program would be the best match based upon that. So we can work with you um, based upon or work, work with what you tell us in the, the application and interview process to make that match. And I would encourage you to both consider countries that you're most interested in, as well as the focus of the country. We do ask both in the application and in the interview how participation in the program aligns with your future goals. Um, and so that is something that we consider in the selection process. So I would be thoughtful of choosing countries uh, that you feel like the experience will equip you with something that uh, gives you the leadership skills and the experience that is going to further you along in your future goals. But that could be both based on interest in program or country. Good question. The so question is, how long do students spend at schools or, I guess, other e events per day? What is, I, I, I'll let Angie chime in on this one as well, but you can view the itineraries, <laughs> sample itineraries for each program online, and that'll give you a better sense of what the students do. I do also know that it varies by program and the thematic focus of each program as to how much time they would either be spending at a school or different facilities, training experiences each day. Um, Angie, do you have more insight you want to add to that? Yeah, that's exactly it. So it varies by program depending on what they're doing. So sometimes their, their mornings can be spent in um, a formal classroom setting and then their afternoons are being, you know, activities. Sometimes their formal classroom setting is on a scavenger hunt in the neighboring town. So it varies depending, as Kathleen mentioned, on the program, what they're doing that day and what other activities we have scheduled for them throughout the week. Hello. Hi. Okay, I have a question. Um, so this is uh, very informative. Um, so thank you. So I have I'm challenged in that I'm very interested in this for my daughter. The only problem I I don't know if you accommodate age because she's not. Uh, she doesn't get to she doesn't turn sixteen I think until college. So, but she's she's in high school. Um, so is there a way because she is in high school, although she may not qualify in terms of her age, that could that she could be involved in this program? 
what could you tell me what grade she's in in high school oh she's currently in, in ninth grade and and how old is she if you don't she know. is 12 years old now okay so in 10th grade she would be like 13 14 yeah so she'll be young um I think that's a like so a unique question that we'll have to think about. If you want mm -hmm. to share private message me your email, I'm happy to um, oh, okay. to chat with you. I would say this for sure. I would say because of the tenth, eleventh grade requirement, mm -hmm. um, it probably the eligibility would not be there for this year. Okay. Um, perhaps next year, even though she's younger, we have um, at different times been able to work with families to get children's passports um, mm -hmm. for folks who are younger than 16. It's a much more extensive process, but I believe it it's possible. But Angie, on the experiment side, I don't know um, if, if you want to chime in now or if that's something we should talk about offline. Yeah, just really quick, and it might be, you know, helpful information for other folks as well. So in terms of just age and um, such for students, we really want our students to be at least 14, 15 years old. And that's for various reasons. One, just um, where they are in their high school career and also for flying purposes. Um, so mm -hmm. one of the things that we um, let folks know when they're booking flights or what have you, which we do for World's Account, um, World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh is how we want what airlines they can fly, what have you. So we just want to be cognizant of those things as well. And oh, that's that right. why I... Um, for other folks. So it makes it a bit more challenging when our participants are a lot younger due to like the constraints of, um, you know, airline protocols and what have you as well. So that's also another piece of it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But if she is 14 next year and in 10th grade, I would encourage you to to reach out and we can mm -hmm. definitely talk through, you know, how we might be able to to, to think about how she can fit in, into the parameters um, given the unique circumstances there. Would, okay. would, definitely wouldn't want to penalize her for being advanced in her <laughs> her schooling um, just because of the age, but we will have to be thoughtful of how it fits into the other travel type requirements of the program. Okay. And and in that pursuit, whom would I reach out to? Would I reach out to, to you or Angie or? I would say reach out to me, um, mm -hmm. Kathleen, yeah, Kathleen at worldpittsburgh.org. Um, and we can uh, definitely talk more about that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Great. Well, I think that's all the questions we have for now. Um, again, please feel free to reach out afterwards if there's anything that comes up or as uh, students are navigating the application process, if any questions arise. Um, You'll probably, uh, after a student applies, I do send out the recommender form. Um, so myself, my colleague, Alicia at the council or Angie, you'll get emails from us along the way, letting you know, um, you know, when your applications are received, if you've been selected for an interview uh, or have not been selected for an interview, you'll get all of those notifications from us. We look forward to working with you all in the process. And, and again, if, um, if you feel like the Global Travel Scholar Program isn't the right fit for you, but you know other students, please help us spread the word. Um, and please also do check out the other uh, programs that the council does offer for high school and middle school students in the region. Um, and we hope to see you at future events. But thank you so much for all for taking the time to learn more about the program. And Angie, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we hope you all have a nice evening. So thank stay well and take care. Bye.